Hi guys, welcome back to Wong Chemistry channel. For this video, it's your topic 4.5, talking about metallic bond, alright? So, in this video, we are going to look into what is actually metallic bond. What will be the factor affecting the metallic bond? How can metallic bond be stronger or weaker? And also, what would be the properties of metal? We are going to discuss four different properties of metal in this video. And without taking more time, let's move to what is actually metallic bond. What do we know about metallic bond? Metallic bond is the electrostatic force of attraction between the positively charged metal and also the sea of delocalized electron. Knowing that the positively charged metal ion will normally be your group 1 metal, your group 2 metal, and also your group 13 metal. Knowing that, in all this group of metal, they will tend to become cation by releasing electron. Do you remember that? And because they release electron, that's why you produce a sea of delocalized electron that looks something like this. This is your metal, positive charge metal, alright? And this is the electron that released by the metal. So, you form a sea of delocalized electron. Bear that in mind, all this electron will be moving non-stop. We always know that the electron will be keep moving. That's why we call it a sea of delocalized electron, because the electron won't be sitting here static. The electron will be all moving non-stop. And that means the electron will be delocalized in this model. The electron will be keep on moving and delocalized, alright? And bear that in mind, the number of electrons that you have over here, the number of electrons that you produce, will be 100% depends on the cation that you produce. So if you are talking about group 1, we will always release only one electron. Okay, when you are talking about group 2, we will release how many electrons? We will release 2 electrons. Group 13, we will release or we will donate 3 electrons. So the number of negative charge that you have around your positive ion must be correct and accordingly to the positive charge. For example, I have sodium. Sodium positive is coming from your sodium neutral by releasing one electron. So from your sodium to become Na+, you release one electron. So the electron C model of your sodium plus ion shall look something like this. You have your Na+, plus. one Na+, plus will release one electron. So if I have another Na+, plus over here, this Na+, plus will release another electron. So the number of electron that you have in here will be 100% depends on the number of cation that you release, okay? It must be in an according number to the cation that you have. See that? I have 4 Na plus over here. That's why I have 4 electron minus. Okay? Another example that I can have is your Mg2 plus. Knowing that your Mg2 plus is from your Mg neutral. From the Mg to become Mg2 plus, we will need to release 2 electrons. Agree? So if I'm having Mg2 plus, 1 Mg2 plus will release 2 electrons. If I have another Mg2 plus over here, this Mg2 plus will also release another two electron. So I have I hope you can see what I mean over here. The number of electron that you release must be correct according to the charge of the cation. So if I have another Mg2 plus, alright, still having four Mg2 plus, but look at the number of electron that I have. You have more electron compared to your Na+, plus. Na+, plus, 4 Na+, plus means 4 electron. Over here, I have 4 Mg2+, plus. that's why I'm having 8 electron around my Mg2+. Plus. That is the difference between the electron C model, okay? Last but not least, let's look take a look at your Al3+, plus. knowing that your Al3+, plus coming from your aluminium group 13, by releasing... How many electrons? It's a 3 positive, release 3 electrons. So let's look at your 
AL3 Plus C model. Your AL3 Plus, one AL3 Plus will release three electrons. See that? So if I have all four AL3 Plus, okay, how many electrons will I have in this electron C model? Simple. You should have 12 electrons because one AL3 Plus will release three electrons. Okay? So you can see over there, the number of electrons that you have in your electron C model must be correct based on the cation that you are forming. And I hope you can see the number of electrons right now is correct accordingly to the positive charge of the metal that you are forming. And all this is what we call electron C model of our metallic bond. So make sure when you draw the electron C model, the number of electron and the number of cation are proportionally correct. Okay, depends on the positive charge, they must be proportionally correct. Okay, next, what would be the factor affecting your metallic bond? We have two factors affecting the metallic bond. And they are the valence electron and also the atomic size. The higher the valence electron, the stronger the metallic bond. The smaller the atomic size, the stronger the metallic bond. And we are actually moving across period over here from your sodium to magnesium all the way to your aluminium. Okay, and you can see that when you are moving across a period, the atomic size decreases. And when the atomic size decreases, the metallic bond of your aluminium should be the strongest. And that can be proven by the valence electron. Looking at your aluminium, the valence electron is 3. You have 3 valence electrons. And you can prove that in the electron C model. 1 Al3 plus release 3 valence electrons to become Al3 plus, obviously. And when you look at the electron C model of aluminium 3 plus and also your sodium over here. Guys, compare these two electron C model. Which one do you think that having a stronger metallic bond? Obviously, your Al over here will have a stronger metallic bond because you have more electron in there. Can you see that? You have stronger metallic bond because you have more valence electron. Okay? So this will have the strongest metallic bond compared to your sodium over here will have the weakest metallic bond because of the atomic size and also the valence electron. Simple. So only two factors. The smaller the atomic size, the stronger the metallic bond. The higher the valence electron, the stronger the metallic bond. So the more valence electron you have, the stronger the metallic bond that you can form. Simple. We are going to look at four different properties of metal, malleability, ductile, electrical conductivity, and thermal conductivity. So we are going to look at each and every one of them. So the first one, malleable. So why the metal have the ability to press into different shapes? For example, your gold. Why your gold can be necklace? All right, you have your gold in the shape of necklace, in necklace form. Why your gold can change into ring? Why your goal can be in the form of pendant, all right? Your pendant, you can have a different shape of pendant. You can have your love shape, all right? You can have your uh, square, you can have your triangle, and so on. So why your goal can be into a different shape of product is simple because of the electron C model of the metal. In the electron C model of the metal, you have electron over all the positively charged atom. Agreed? So you know that the electron will be moving non-stop, guys. Alright? When the electron is moving non-stop and when you have a pressure applied, what happens when you have the pressure applied? When you have enough pressure is put on the metal, the layer of atom will actually slide over each other. When the layer of atom is sliding over each other, the shape of the metal will then can change. All right, that's why you can have your goal from a metal to become different shape of the product and even in the paper light over here, okay? 
And this is the reason why your metal can change into different shape. The second property is ductile. Ductile is the ability to pull into wire. We know that your copper will always be your wire. So the question over here, your copper over here. All right, a block of copper. How can a block of copper become a wire? Why the metal can be pulled? All right. So you can see over here, the metal right now is being pulled. So why your metal can be pulled? Simple. Same thing. When you have enough pressure is put on the metal, the layer of atom will again slide over each other when you pull the metal. When you pull the metal, the atom will slide over each other and the shape of the metal again change. Simple. All right. And all that is because of your electron C model that having your positive charge and your electron knowing that your electron will be moving non-stop over that. So when the electron moving non-stop, the atom can slide to each other and changing the shape of the metal. Simple. All right. Next, why the metal having the ability to conduct electricity? The same reason, guys. The same reason is because you have your positive charge and you have all your electron is moving non-stop over here. Or the blue dot over here is the electron. So when the electron is moving non-stop in this two diagram, the electron will be carry the electricity from the negative terminal to the positive electron. That is the reason why your electricity will be able to conduct in a metal because your electron in the electron C model is moving non-stop. So when the electron in the electron C model is moving non-stop, the electron will then carry the electricity and moving from the negative terminal to the positive terminal. That's it. Simple. All the property of metal that we are going to discuss today is because of the electron C model, where in the electron C model, the electron will be delocalized. The electron is moving non-stop. All right. Last but not least, why the metal able to transfer heat? We know that the metal always transfer heat. But have you ever realized that when you have a cup of hot water or when you're eating a bowl of hot soup, all right, and you're holding a metal spoon. So you put your metal spoon into the hot liquid. So what happened? It will take a few seconds for your hand to feel the heat. Why? Simple. If you look at your metal over here, you have your source of fire. Okay, when you have your source of fire over here, look at it. It will take times for the heat to be transferred from one end to another end. And simple, why is that happen? Because of the electron that you have in the electron C model, where we know that the electron will be moving non-stop. So the electron will be carrying heat from the high temperature end. All right, and the electron will be then moved non-stop, carrying the heat until the end that have a lower temperature. And that is how the heat is transferred in a metal. The electron will move from a high temperature region to a low temperature region. And during the movement, the heat or the thermal is transferred through those moving electrons. That's why when you're holding a metal spoon and you have a bowl of hot soup, it will take a few seconds for the heat to reach your hand because the electron is the one that carrying the heat and all the way up to your hand from a hot temperature to a low temperature of your hand. See that? And all that again is because of the electron C model. Make sense? All right. And that's it about metallic bond. If you have any question about metallic bond, drop it in the comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again in the next video.